are down people. That's it. That's the that's the only vocal warm up you need ever. Dogs are better than people. Welcome to Folly Ado. Welcome to a very exciting edition of Folly Ado, the podcast where we rate and rant all things spooky. But really, you know, it's just it's been movies. It's, it's, it's really just, just movies. movies. Yeah. Um, and what makes this episode different is it's a very spooky episode because it's Halloween. It's Halloween. Here we are. It's Halloween. And um, for those those of you that know this show quite well so far, we spin our the movies that we watch at random. We use the uh, spooky, what do we call it? Our spooky spinner the that spooky has spin. a list of all of our movies. <laughs> and if we have anyone who wants to recommend movies, mm -hmm. we're always open to that. But mm -hmm. yeah, we, we spin our little wheel of movies and it landed on... <sighs> The, the Exorcist. Exorcist. It couldn't be. It couldn't have been a better movie to land on, really. I, yeah, considering I was, all of the duds that we got. In I that. was really surprised that it landed on that. And you know what? Kudos to you, Spooky Spinner. Good, good job. <laughs> Great job. Someone's really looking Way out to for be us. An app. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was, I was kind of excited to actually watch this movie just because it's. I can't say it's been a while since I've seen it, but um, I it, it tends to be pretty long. Um, spans of time between each viewing session. So I'm like, yeah, I don't really remember all the scenes too well. Obviously, I know what happens and everything, but I don't remember how we get to certain spots. Yeah, the last time I saw this movie was like summer of 2019. And I remember that because we tried to watch it um, on our projector at mm. our cabin. And sound really carries over the lake. Yeah, that was the worst so that movie. <laughs> We we stopped pretty quickly. Fuck me. <laughs> That's exactly when we stopped. Yeah, we're like, oh. And we're like, oh, no. Let's put on Ratatouille. And the neighbors do Ratatouille. <laughs> Someone gets even more angry at Ratatouille for some reason. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we watched The Exorcist. And um, what did you think? What are your first initial thoughts before getting into? Uh... I, I love that movie. Mm -hmm. I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I think the acting, especially Reagan... I think she's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I really like, I'm always really surprised when kids are decent at acting. <laughs> I, I know. No, yeah. But that, you we've should watched be. a couple in a row now that have, they've been really good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, love her. Which could be a good thing or just an omen of bad things to come. Bad movies are coming. Like I feel too it. much of a good thing will end up yes. leading to a bad thing. Yeah. I feel it. It's a very 2020 outlook to have i mean you got to pick up certain vibes and you hold on to them so they're called scars um yeah i liked it though <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i did too um it, it reminded me uh how much how much i liked it and like you said it reminded me how much i like acting um even like even it doesn't really matter how old the movie is um which i think a lot of people kind of i think to move some, away from well i think to some degree because uh, you know there are movies that we've seen that are like what the 1950s or mm -hmm. something and you can really i mean the acting there are certain people who are better than others but yeah. there it's really just kind of a style in that sense. yeah like you can tell those that were from the 50s or it's, acted in yeah, the 50s the cadence, it's a certain way yeah of acting. everything like that um but yeah i mean and you know knowing the little tricks behind the movie like especially with the makeup mm -hmm. too oh my gosh i appreciate it so much yeah. more no i i liked it um let me let me jump into some of the behind the scenes the aspects of the exorcist the so trivia. not the trivia yet we'll get into the trivia though what are we calling this part then? this is just we're just talking about the movie <laughs> <laughs> so the exorcist was made in 1973 way back when but really it's not that far when back. it was 73 yeah it was around yeah. when it was 73 um so for those that haven't seen it and are ready for us to spoil the movie for you <laughs> um the movie is basically about a famous movie actress chris um desperately seeks help for her um young 12 year old daughter mm -hmm. by uh, the help of two priests because she believes that she is possessed by a demon i think that's kind of just a quick that's a very quick, quick summary yeah the there's a lot of stuff that happens prior to everything like that happening or prior to getting to the point where we have two priests but um, the director is William Friedkin. Friedkin, um, um, Franken. Franken. 
uh, also directed To Live and Die in L.A., which is 1985. Don't know it. Um, and then Rules of Engagement in 2000. I don't think I've seen that. I've heard of it. Nope. All right. Um, the cast is uh, Max von Sido. Sido. He's uh, the one that played Father Marin. Mm. He was also the third-eyed raven in Game of Thrones. What? He was also in Star Wars. What? Yeah, he had a lot of roles like that. He also had like a lot of roles after that this movie too. so well. I know. He just <laughs> stayed looking the same. But he actually passed away this, this past oh. March. Well, not March, <laughs> I know. March 2020, oh. he passed away. But it was really nice just to kind of look back and see like Terrible all the movies year. that he had. I know. They're taking everyone. And then you got Ellen Burstyn. Um, she played Chris. Um, she also was in House of Cards. And she also was in W. She was Barbara Bush in hmm. W. Um, as well, she had her own show too, the Ellen Burst, Burstyn show in like the 80s. But Never saw it. Wasn't born. No, no. Um, Jason Miller, who played Father Karras, and then Linda Blair for Regan. That's such a creepy name. Linda Blair? Yeah. I know. I know. It's super creepy. I used to watch this uh, paranormal kind of TV show where she was the host. Mm. And then um, Zelda from Poltergeist, that, mm. that woman, mm -hmm. she was like the narrator of the show. Oh so God. like Linda was the host and she'd like introduce all of yeah. these like haunted castles and stuff. And then they go and have a crew go there and they could tell the story. But Zelda's the one that did the narration and she like mm. talked really slow like this. And it was, it was super creepy. And I remember as a kid, I was, I was, I was creeped out. Now I'm sure if I watch it, I'm like, oh my God, this is so over the top, but I liked it a lot. But yeah, so I guess um, getting into it, the the setting is in Georgetown University in in or around Washington, D.C. DC. I don't know the area very well, but... And I agree with what you said about uh, Regan and her acting or mm -hmm. Linda Blair and her mm -hmm. acting. It, I was saying this in the beginning of the movie that it, it felt really natural. It felt um, like you just watch her. She's not looking for lines. And these are like really hard kind of um, shots too because they're like they're prolonged. Really close up. Close up. You're watching. We are watching everything that she is doing. Mm -hmm. we, we don't even see what Chris is doing. Like when she's talking with her and her mom, mm -hmm. you don't see how the mom is engaging with her. You only see Regan. And it just looks like a little girl talking to her mom before exactly. going to bed. It was it was great. Yeah. Um, and it, that's what you learn in like acting class and stuff too. Is okay, hot shot. <laughs> Anyways, but I mean like that's, that's something that you kind of strive for is to look like you're having a natural conversation yeah. where you're not anticipating their next line mm -hmm. and you're not telegraphing anything. And that looks, it looked great. Mm -hmm. And she was pretty consistent until obviously... Even like when she started changing, yeah. like you can tell the possession was happening because her mannerisms were different. Like what she said was different and her, Very she was super different. aggressive. <laughs> yeah. And I think Chris too, she said it too. She's like, she's a different person. She's yeah. changing. And I'm sure that kind of helped. But um, I think Chris played a really good, like uh, distraught mother too. Yeah. Kind of over the top with certain scenes. She screamed but... a lot. Yeah. And it was like consistent though. It was like from the beginning to... Mm -hmm to the end. I don't know, certain moments that again felt actually very like 1950s to yes. me where she Regan's in the bedroom, clearly something's happening, there's possession, she's almost it looks like she's having this like over the top violent seizure in the bed and yep. two doctors are attending her and Chris is in the corner screaming, "No!" No. Yeah. You know, where it just feels very old fashioned. I, I'm glad you I'm glad you picked up on that because I thought the same thing about the her just as in the actress herself. Mm -hmm. Because um, one, because of that and how like she she would do certain I, and I'm sure it's not her fault for it, but you could tell that she was she she was like a 50s actor or had like when did started she start somewhere acting, around there. Do we know? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I mean, I could look it up, but um, she, she it, it, her style, like the way that she talked and the way mm -hmm. that she moved to yeah. um, within a couple of scenes, there was like just scenes where. I, and I, like I said, I, I get it's not her. She's not the one that's directing each scene. Mm -hmm. But it seems like certain scenes she like, there was one where she had her head turned or she was turned facing the opposite way of the camera. And then she did like this dramatic turn towards the camera, <laughs> yeah. right? She's wearing like the um, little scarf, little scarf yeah. over her head because she's having a, a tough time. But um, it, that's just the kind of feel I got too. Mm -hmm. It seemed like she was trained. Yeah. Um, either she was acting then or well, she, okay. So it looks like she was, um, more so in television series in the late fifties mm. and then started picking up in the sixties. Mm. Um, it looks like she's predominantly a television actor, which is interesting to see. 
um, because the last show or the last movie that we watched, Hounds of Love, those actors were predominantly TV series actors too. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think there is a difference between a television actor and yeah. a film actor, right? Um, so, but yeah, I, I felt like she played that distraught mother pretty well. And I, I think it didn't bother me too much. It wasn't like too over the top for me. Right. But you can definitely tell there are some moments that kind of took me out a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then I, I guess without having to go through like every single um, actor, um, I, I enjoyed uh, both of the fathers too, Father Marin and then um, Father Karis. Mm-hmm. Father Marin being the old guy. Yeah. Um, and then Karis being the the ex-boxer <laughs> um, who obviously was having a tough you know time with his mother who was dying. Mm-hmm. Um, did she just like she injure her leg? That's what it looked like. It looked like in the beginning, he goes to visit her and he's bandaging her leg. So mm-hmm. and I don't think it's anything like post-surgery or something like that. So it looked like she just injured her leg. Right. Um. But yeah, they don't make it super clear what that storyline is. Just that she's a aging woman living on her own, has health issues, and then soon passes away. It was uh, interesting to see too because we, when we were watching, we're like, we had questions. We're like, what, the well, what about was this? Iffy there. Um, but I noticed too, like some of our questions were answered a couple scenes later. The the movie itself, basically, it. I one thing I do want to note too with the movie is the beginning of the movie, and I remember as a kid, um, watching this movie and absolutely hating the beginning of the movie mm-hmm. because I felt like it was so boring. I but afterwards, didn't realize I'm like, how long it was. I uh, yeah. remember it being much shorter, and maybe that's probably because I felt the same way that I didn't really connect it because it's so. It seems I'm sure as a kid too, it seems very disconnected. Yeah. from oh, Georgetown. Yeah, yeah. Right. I was like, how do the like yeah. how the heck do we get from like, here Iraq to, to over here? Yeah, and it it confused me so much as a kid that I just never paid attention to it, and I mm-hmm. waited till it was done mm-hmm. until we got back to the states. And I'm like, all right, um, but I, obviously, I think that means I knew what was to come mm-hmm. by that point too. Um, but in, I mean, in retrospect now, like I, I don't mind um, the beginning of the movie as, especially, I mean, that's a lot of um, time to watch father Marin and, you know, mm-hmm. him going through his stuff too. So I, I thought that was more interesting than I remember as a kid. Yeah. Definitely. As, especially his makeup. Can we just talk about them? Yeah. Let's talk about the makeup. <laughs> let's talk about his, uh, his crazy makeup. How So, when you watch the movie, this guy looks like he's, what, in his 70s, mm-hmm. it looks like? All of his mannerisms match it. And he, when he was, when they were filming the movie, how old was this actor? So, Father Marin was 44. The actor playing Father Marin That's was 44. That's insane. You don't, you don't see makeup that good nowadays. Yep. And I just, I remember the first time I heard that, it was... I, I don't know if I was like watching a video or if it was like a movie class that I was taking in high school or something like that. But I remember thinking that there's no way that's real. Like there's no yeah. way that can be, but it's, it's done so well and so seamlessly. And we were talking about this when we were watching it, the only big kind of um, giveaway that he's not in his seventies is his eyes. His eyes are, yeah. you know, very bright kind of white and, but everything else, I think as an actor, too, he did such an amazing job, mm-hmm. you know, even just keeping like his eyelids lower yep. and his slower movements and like the little shaking of the hands here and there. Amazing. And they obviously did things to his hands. Too. Yeah. They really accentuated on his veins mm-hmm. and, and, you know, spots. The wrinkled and skin and all of that. Translucent kind of look to it. So great. It was great. I, lo- I love that. That's Maybe one of, out of all of the weird things and kind of like trivia from that movie, that's probably one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. Just because it's, well, first of all, we know it's real. Right. But um, I also heard that he had a tough time getting acting gigs after that role because everyone thought they that thought, he was a 70-year-old man. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But I mean, kudos to the... to the that's amazing. Right? Yeah. Um, so it, apparently it took three hours a day. Um to stipple and add liquid latex mm-hmm. to his face every single time he was on screen. So, damn, you know, props to them. Um, and then uh, some of the other notes I had too was uh, more so like on the effects too. So, um, I'd say like even the makeup for Regan looked pretty cool too. I wouldn't say obviously was as realistic 
as <laughs> Father Marin's. Um, but I do like some of the progression it's a very when she's getting more, pres- iconic, more possessed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, yeah, exactly. At this point, it's just like. At this point, it's iconic. But it, yeah, I mean, I think I liked all of the cuts and everything mm-hmm. like that on her face. Hate the vomit. And the that spit, very of, green vomit. I, yeah. Um, and uh, we were laughing too because when she spits on uh, at, at Father Karras for the first time, he his mouth is open, so like he's like ah, oh! and then, and the, then spit, the, the vomit goes right into his mouth, and that always I feel like that always happens when there's like oh my God. blood or any kind of like bodily fluid that's coming at you from a possessed evil person yep. or spirit or whatever or like they're like throwing up like black sludge oh. and it's just like ah, it's ah all in the mouth the open it, mouth it's a target at yeah. that point they're like raw hair yeah. <laughs> um so apparently that scene um only took one take and the yeah, vomit he was probably like fuck this i'm yeah. not doing it again <laughs> <laughs> the vomit was made of thick pea soup. Yeah, it definitely it does look like pea soup. One of the reasons I hate pea soup. And it was supposed to hit his chest, but the plastic tubing misfired and <laughs> hit him in the face. Oh. So his shock of disgust was actually genuine. It was probably like cold pea soup yep. too. And he, I guess like in a in an interview too, he admitted that he was actually like super pissed. I would have that been gay. Yeah. Um and, uh, but I feel like out of everything that happened in the movie, the fact that you're pissed that a little pea soup got in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently, um, he he has He's a couple different. Peas. He he's allergic to peas. <laughs> no, like he um, apparently he had some troubles with this movie and the creation of it, especially the director, um, which we'll talk about yeah. too with some of the actors. But him specifically, he he stated that he had a really bad confrontation mm. with the director. After the director fired a gun near his ear to get an authentic reaction from him. <laughs> okay, I understand the soup thing now a little bit more. Because if this preceded the soup thing, I'd be like, what else are you going to throw at me? <laughs> I'm going to shoot a gun near your head. <laughs> what and then a dick. <laughs> what he told the director, he's like, he told the director he's an actor and he didn't need a gun to act surprised or startled. He's like, he can do it. <laughs> The director's like, nah, nah, I need the real thing. Which, I mean, there is a, you know, there is something to say about, like, a genuine reaction to things, but... Yeah, but maybe not... Let's not bring let's firearms not into guns. it. guns. Uh, yeah. Let's so, not burst eardrums. <laughs> um, <laughs> he goes into the hospital, but then why are you checking into the hospital? I had to look surprised. <laughs> yeah. I, and speaking of hospitals, too, the um, the hospital that they, uh, they <gasps> went into... Not, a, not that not, one yet. Mm. I'll do that one last <laughs> Um, the other hospital, the first one that his mother was in, mm. that's actually, they actually went to a real one. That's actually a real, real one. Patients? And those were all real <gasps> patients. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. I know. I know. They did like, and cause they did a lot of reaction shots with those people too. And yeah. you know, some of them were laying down and oh, had wow. no idea what that was happening too. Way sad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, I don't know about the scene where like they're all kind of crowding him and then he he's like very aggressive. He's like, Get off. I can't imagine that. I, but, you know, but you never know. It's the 70s. Um, it's soup. a different time. Pea soups. Um, I, I don't know if I have it in my notes, um, but apparently someone even after the movie, they still really love pea soup and they enjoy eating it. <laughs> Is it Regan? <laughs> I don't. It might have been actually. Um, but so uh, along with. Um, some of the cool effects I really enjoyed the um, I think the spinning head too mm-hmm. is something that's uh, it is interesting to watch it when the camera is completely still and then you see her just sit still and mm-hmm. then the head go around um, but uh, that and then the scene where she uses a cross mm. to masturbate that's not masturbating <laughs> <laughs> she does it to do something with it but then grabbing her mom and then f- forcing and telling her to lick it. She basically stabs her vagina yeah. with a cross and then tells her mom to lick it. And there's blood and it was really gross. Oh, so then God. it leads into um, her slapping her, um, her mom. Mm-hmm. And then she gets thrown across the room and she hits the corner of the room um, on the floor. And um, apparently uh, that was also very real. And... They had the pulled mother's reaction. her reaction was very real because uh, she, um, after being pulled, uh, they were she was pulled by a harness, mm-hmm. and um, she slammed onto the floor, 
and it caused um, her to actually dislocate or not <gasps> dislocate, but like injure part of her vertebrae. Oh vertebra, my God. Um, in her back and actually led to like permanent kind of like. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. It's it, in my notes. It said received a permanent injury when being pulled by a harness and then she landed on her coccyx and then that's what the scream was literally her screaming in pain. Ugh. And then, yeah. So, needless to say, a lot of the effects in here were very much real, and the director was very much into <laughs> was using, very much an asshole. Yes, um, and t- even to the point where he like slapped people um, just to get them going. So he slapped um, Jason Miller. Or I guess Harris. if I like if I'm expecting it, and be like, okay, hit me, hit me, you know, kind of a thing. But he, I right, but the way if that it's I've, just the director coming up to you and slapping you. Mm, I'd I'd hit back with a knife. Yeah, well, I mean, it didn't seem like he was very happy because they it's they said like his hands were trembling um, immediately afterwards. Father Karras. Oh well, if, yeah, he's slapping this guy. Around. There's slapping clearly around. Some, <laughs> there's like a personal uh, issue there. Yeah, um, and then even with uh, so uh, when Regan was um, when she was saying help me and mm-hmm. she was going back and forth up flailing and down on the flailing. Bed, yeah. Um, that was done with a foam latex, like replica Thank God. of her belly. Wait. Um, or no, sorry, not the flapping. It's, it's the, uh, writing mm. that was done with a foam, which you can kind of tell based yeah, on it how, looks, yeah, it looks awful. um, but, but, uh, they wrote out, um, in a paintbrush and then cleaning fluid. Um, so then the, they filmed it in the words formed from the chemical reaction mm-hmm. of those fluids. And then they used, uh, heat um to form blisters with a blow dryer and then um the film was run backwards mm. to kind of get that effect mm. um so little things like that i think it was kind of fun obviously they would not do that today they would just be like why do that when we have cg yeah let's just do cg yeah. um which i i can understand mm-hmm. but who knows um but uh I, I realize we didn't really go through no, we much of the movie. We talked about the movie. We're just still in tri- There's a lot of trivia. There's so much trivia in this, this movie. And it, we haven't even gotten to the best one. <laughs> yeah. So do you want to do you want, do we want to run through the movie? I think we should run through the movie. Okay. Yeah, and save the best for last. So, um, like I said, the movie kind of starts off into um, the we're in Iraq. We're in Iraq. Uh, Father Marin is there on an archaeological search. Yeah. Um, to which he finds a little. Um, uh, like Wouldn't little, say like a keychain kind of. <laughs> it's not. It's a little iron head, so it oh, looks like well, a yeah. little statue. So it's just a small like iron head almost. We well, finds that, like but he cart. also finds the little. It's a little. It's a little coin. It's a little pendant. Right, pendant. That's what's trying to think. A keychain. Yeah, I mean it goes yeah, on. Yeah, no, keychain. you're right. Um. So uh. Yeah. So he's he's out in Iraq, and then um, he finds that statue to which he um. I think he. Does he he goes to a, a friend of his within there? Um, oh, oh no, I do want to note too when he finds it, he like dusts it off. Well, the way that and they're then digging cracks it off the rock is just it's really upsetting because they show these guys with like pickaxes just slamming into the stone. And I'm like, if you're on an archaeological dig, you don't do that, right? Because if you're trying to, because he you're here to preserve. Well, and that's the to... thing, you have to be so careful. But whatever. Yeah. So he finds this little head and just breaks it off from this piece of rock, which you don't know. There could have been the body in there. Hmm, I don't know. So what did he do with the rock after he or the artifact that he finds? We see like he clearly is looking at this. He knows something's off about this. And then you see him sitting at a little cafe and he's completely just like kind of shaken up and everything like that. And then um, he is telling this other man who looks like he's some kind of historian or and this guy tells a, just basically says like oh are you sure you can't stay longer like we'd love to have you and Father so Mary, he's there to tell him that he's not you're basically the story is basically telling you he's leaving iraq right and then he goes further outside of or just outside the city and then you see the scene where he's staring at this other kind of big almost like monstrous statue and then you have like the dogs fighting and barking in the background. And it's like you have almost like this fly buzzing in the background too. And I think, is that where they use like the lion sounds? I'm not well? sure. Because I, I remember reading something where they use bees buzzing and like a lion growling kind of to almost trigger um, fight or flight response in people. Mm. Um, so it's just like, it's 
kind of subtly put in in the background noise. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then they have the scene where he's standing kind of, uh, it's like a face-off kind of look. Yeah, he's facing uh, the statue, the two, yeah. so, Which is kind of like a symbolic thing that they're the going for. The golden Yeah. Um, so then we go back to um, DC where we're introduced to, um, I think we're, in, intro- we're introduced at that point, we're introduced to Chris, to Chris yep. who's, um, who's on set filming on the college town. You meet her director, who's just this drunk British baboon. Mm-hmm. Um, so you see her do her work, and then uh, you actually see Father Karras, too, who's watching as a bystander. <laughs> and then he leaves. He just looks so... Uh, it just looks like a little fanboy. Yeah. Because he's yeah. watching in the background of them shooting this scene, and he almost looks like he's, like, hopping with excitement. Um, then it cuts to Chris going home, and you see that she has a daughter, mm-hmm. Regan, who's 12 years old with their kind of live-in nanny assistant. I really like the relationship between the mother and daughter. Like we said, it seemed very natural um, between the two of them. And then we're taken to the basement where Regan has a bunch of her art stuff, and she pulls out this Ouija board and says that she's been, <laughs> she's been communicating with Captain Howdy. Captain Howdy. <laughs> Captain Howdy, the the demon. The demon, Captain um, Howdy. And, and you said you were wondering if she uh, named. Yeah, I'm like, it, it did Captain Regan Howdy, name or, or did it actually spell out Captain Howdy? I mean, I think that's the thing too, because they show it move. Mm-hmm. Didn't it move by itself or something? Yeah, as soon as Chris tried to play with it. it so moved. I mean, it's not crazy to think that. Well, no, it did, clearly that's what. It's, yeah, it's the it's the thought that you know, did she come up with it name or did it? I like to think that. It came up with it like it's it's, it's plain very innocent. it's clever yeah it's cutting enough to be i don't know if i feel like comfortable that. talking to a captain spirit howdy. named captain howdy <laughs> are you regan are you 12 no <laughs> <laughs> who wouldn't want to talk to captain howdy <laughs> i'd have a lot of questions i don't if know I'd... even as a 12 year old i'd be like yeah. captain howdy i'd have so many questions i'd get so but my attention span would be lost on them just spelling it out <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, that's true too. I'd be like, Cap. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Yeah. As soon as I get to Captain, yeah, like, I'm like, oh, oh my Jesus, God. I need a snack break yeah. or something. <laughs> I just Give me your, a juice box. I just want your name out, like your formal title. <laughs> <laughs> Reginald <That's disgusting>. Howdy. <laughs> that's Admiral Howdy to that's you. That's Admiral Havet. <laughs> anyway. Hey there. <laughs> um, and throughout some of the scenes, we hear this. It, to me, it sounded like flapping of like birds. Wings yeah, it sounds like something flying around and stuff like that. And so clearly, something's moving around up there. And cl- you know, there's a scene where Chris goes up, and she has a just a little tiny candlestick. She's going up in the middle of the night into this creepy attic. She's like, "You're not going to see anything. No, you're just asking for trouble. You're going to light something on fire." And then it just turns into this like inferno. <laughs> it's funny because like as soon as we said like this is a fire hazard, and then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just lights up. But um, yeah, so after that, I think it cuts to um, Damien, right? And it, mm-hmm. yeah, and it just kind of shows you again the scene where he goes to visit his mom. You can see that he was a boxer. So he's, you know, he's pretty strong. And it's just, it's, yeah, so it just shows that his mom is in poor health. Right. And he's coming to. And then he obviously has like some kind of guilt about keeping her there and not being mm-hmm. able to pay for it. But. Um, what you do find out too is that um, he is a, a he's a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I thought it was psychiatrist. Okay, yeah. So he's part of the priesthood, but he is in kind of this um, psychology department yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And so he, which is I actually do like in the movie where a lot of times when like all of these paranormal things happen, or, and you know Chris is talking to him later on, he tries to tell her this isn't what's happening yeah. this is a normal he's not gonna go straight into it and be yeah like, You're right. it's not gonna go into like oh well this is our you know paranormal person they're our paranormal priest right so um but yeah and then we're taken to it's, it's coming from a very scientific side of things which especially first, someone from the catholic then, church right oh my god I'm very interesting here. but um yeah so then we get to the party scene yep so which i I do think this is interesting too when the director, who again is clearly drunk, yep. is talking to the butler and he's just calling him like a Nazi bastard. And then they almost get into a fight. And that doesn't ever go anywhere but that scene. And it's I don't know a, if it's just to put in just to show that like the director's yeah. a drunk and that's and like he can't he, handle Because he immediately after fighting, he's just like, what? I was like, what's for dessert? What's for dessert? And yeah. then you go, ha ha ha. 
get out. Get out of my house. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Chris has a bunch of people over, and she's talking, and there's another priest there. Like, there's the priests, priests are just everywhere. all over. I've never yeah, seen so many priests in my life. All over the place. Um, and she actually brings up Father Damien to this other priest, mm-hmm. and, you know, that's how there's a connection that's made there. And then Regan comes down as the party is kind of coming to an end, and she <laughs> looks at one of the guests, and she goes, you're going to die up there. You're going to die up there. <laughs> and then she just starts peeing, <laughs> which I think is actually, it's, you don't need a lot of special effects no. for that or anything, but it's a very unsettling scene, just yeah. having a child just stand there and pee, who's, she's not, you know, she's not two years old, she's not four years old, she's a 12-year-old. Right. So yeah. just to like be peeing right there. And you can tell on everyone's face, they don't know what to do. Uh, it would be so uncomfortable. Yeah. And I mean, again, then you have this other, which I think is kind of a, so a weirdly sweet scene when Chris takes her up, gives her a bath. Oh, yeah. Like, like party's that, over. It's like, party's yeah, over. It's my, my daughter's. Instead of a lot of times, I think you see, oh, well, if it's a famous actress mother, she doesn't give time. a shit about the kid. Yeah. I mean, she does have her, uh, um, her help there too. Yeah, she has so her assistant. Yeah, like... so there's so many things that she could have just messed off. But um, yeah, so then she puts uh, Regan to bed. And then there's a few other scenes where, you know, Regan sneaks into her mom's bed and mentions she can't fall asleep in her room because the bed keeps moving. Right. And it's a very kind of... So like initially with the movie, it's it seemed to be pretty slow going, but mm-hmm. now things are starting to Now things to are starting to pick up. up. Um, <clears throat> and then I think there's... I think this is probably another cut to Damien where it's clearly something has happened to his mother um, health wise. She's put in the men- mental Institute. And then uh, it almost seem, seems like a scene later. We hear that his mother has passed away. Yeah. So the timeline there is a little iffy for me. I yeah. Wish it felt really have, weird. Yeah. I wish they would have kind of explained that a little bit more because they, because it, it was like literally like it, the, it felt like the next scene. Yeah, afterwards. it's They're very like, oh, by soon the way. after he's walking out of the mental hospital with his uncle. Like, we should get her out. Why did you put her in right. here? Blah blah blah. And you had just you just see the mother just before that, and then it cuts to another scene where someone's talking. They're saying, "Oh, well, his mother passed away. She lived alone. He wasn't there to be with her." So the timeline's a little iffy for me, right? Which I'm not always a fan of, but whatever. Well, I mean, it is it is hard for us to follow when we don't know, you know, the time in between yeah. from when we saw one scene to the other. You have to mm-hmm. guide us through this. Otherwise, I'd l- yeah, I would like to know how long this possession is going on with Regan, too. We don't yeah. really get a good sense no, of that. Really. But yeah, so then we come to the scene where Regan's bed starts just like bouncing off. Oh, I wanted the- to throw in a uh, trivia thing. So the <laughs> woman that played his mother, she actually did, did die. Too. She was one of the people that actually died. Wasn't the di- the director, the drunken director, didn't he die by falling downstairs? He actually died too. Yeah. Which is life. how he kind of, one of the ways he, The way he died in the yeah. movie was also the way how he died in real life. He was killed by a 12 year old, thrown out a window. Close. <laughs> that hasn't been confirmed yet. <laughs> Nasty in England. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we get to the scene. So now we're starting to see some, some possession activity where the bed is bouncing off. The, the ground off the ground it's going and, like back and forth. yeah and regan's on the bed she's screaming for her mother and this is when chris sees something is clearly going on that can't be explained yep. she feels it too so she takes regan to some doctors and she's telling them like my daughter is not acting right she's right. like something's off with her i don't know what it is and what does she say to the doctor <laughs> that talks to her first she said like does she spit in his face or something this oh, yeah, no, she does. She hospital. spits in his yeah, face. Yeah, so she spits in his face. I think they give she her, She calls like, him a fucking bastard. Okay, there we go. So you yeah. remember now. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so, like, we're starting to see the change in Regan, and now they're starting to... their Things get worse and worse, and they're, so they're starting to run tests on her. And this is probably your least favorite part of the movie. When they put a needle into her neck. I, and so I'm and like... And then the blood splurts. I love, I love blood in movies, but there's certain times when they it's it's either done like really well or it's just the shot it's the angle it's it's something um about it that just makes me sick and that is one that definitely makes me feel sick that's one that's definitely one that i'm like i'll look up for a second but i'm glad i'm sitting down because i'll get really sweaty and hot and <laughs> i feel tried like i'm to pass make out look it didn't work no i i can't um it's 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 so weird. It, I think it's, and it's funny because like gore fest movies, you know, like huge gore does nothing to me, but little tiny blood things like that, that are a little bit more realistic um, to me at least. I think it looked really good. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, 
nope, I don't want to see this. Like, there's no way I'd be able to watch some kind of like operation or uh, anything like that. I can't. And I've worked in the like medical, you know, um, industry and I've seen videos of things and I'm like, uh, I got to turn it off right now. <laughs> like it was on our website and it drove me crazy because I was like, one of the first things you see because mm-hmm. it's an autom- it automatically started playing. Yeah. I've, yeah, I've oh my God. worked on some, you know, PowerPoint slides where the oh. next slide is just like, an open body. Yep. Like, oh God! Yeah. A Can little warning. Pretty this up, please. He just Make added like a little, <laughs> little blood drop emojis around it. <laughs> just Whoa. enhance the saturation. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, then we get to all of the kind of um, the like cat scans yep. and the EEGs, and that is it's such it's a very small moment. And if you don't know anything about this movie, you wouldn't. It's not a huge scene. It's not a scene that you're really going to, like, it's really going to pop out. But mm-hmm. should we talk about it now or do we want to talk yeah. about it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to. Oh, gonna go look. ahead. Say what, say what you know. Well, what I know is that, so they actually wanted, when they were filming, they wanted someone who looked like they knew what they were doing. So, and I can't remember if this was someone who actually worked in a hospital or this was a student. But so they just kind of plucked someone from Georgetown. They're like, hey, listen we need an extra for this. Can you just kind of stand in? And it's this guy who just looks very unassuming. He talks to Regan. He kind of explains what they're doing. Well, this guy who's not given a name in the scene was an active serial killer. (laughs) I just, there are so many creepy things about this movie, but this one just again, because it is so real. Absolutely insane. He was an active serial killer. And I think he wasn't, he, um, he was a, gay guy who was killing other men those were yeah those were his victims and that's i mean i don't want to get too far into it because those are kind of the details that i know yeah so based like i i wanted to look more into this too and i think actually he wasn't technically active it was like a couple years after the movie Mm -hmm. so this movie was 73 Mm -hmm. and i guess like his first murder was like 75 76 or something like that known murder it's known yeah exactly so there's a possibility but (laughs) um so he uh, he was a tech. Um, his name was Paul Bateson, um, who at the time was I, I put who at the time was an active radiological technician and serial killer. <laughs> um, but I, I put later serial killer just. But uh, he was found guilty to several gruesome murders where his body his victims' bodies were cut up and collected oh into bags. God. So he was known as, uh, I think he was known as like the bag serial killer or the bag man. Um, so uh, he was sentenced to 20 years to life in prison. But Bateman is a free man today. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh my God. I, I sw- Having been released in 2004. That's, bi- <laughs> that's ridiculous. And ending his parole in 2008. How do you feel? I feel very upset. (laughs) That's just, I mean, okay. So he kills all of these innocent people. And then our system's like, you know what? Let's see how you do in a structured environment where we have guards watching you and you're locked up. And if you do pretty well there, we'll probably let you out. Yeah, they go. That's no good behavior in prison is no marker for, for someone like this. Yeah. I don't want it. They they like it's like uh they tell him twenty years to life, twenty years. So you're saying you're saying you're there's, saying a, there's chance. a chance. <laughs> and then they go ah ah. So yeah, released in two thousand four. Um, but mm. the is he dead? The Shining Ray is um, based on public records. He is thought to have passed away in twenty twelve. So we don't know though. No. Yeah, like I apparently um I think. From what I saw, I don't have all of the notes in here. I want to keep it succinct, but um, apparently there was confusion as to his identity after he got out of the prison system because I think he changed his his name and everything and went they through didn't the process. Want to keep, oh my god! I don't know, but um, they were able to find what they think were his like birth records from the beginning, and then were able to um, compare them to death records of a specific person mm-hmm. in a different state. And oh my god! <laughs> they think that it's the same person, so they're like, he, "He's probably dead." No, I'm sorry, but a serial killer, you need to like chip him or something. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Bateson, where are you? 
<laughs> but yeah, that is absolutely insane. Oh, God, it's such disgusting. a crazy. It's, it's so crazy. I see. I was more excited because I thought he was dead. Nah. Ah! <laughs> Or at least dead, like within the prison system, and that's it. Yeah, or yeah, locked up, an unmarked grave, out there in the prison graveyard. But no, he probably even has a marked grave. I don't know. So, anyways, she goes through all these <laughs> these tests, which actually looked really terrifying, like huge clanging, banging well, pieces of shit machinery around yeah. your head. I mean, nowadays they have like kids who need to get like scans. They have like cool pictures. Yeah. On the wall. So it's like if it's a little kid going in there who's already terrified of what's going on and then you put them in this giant machine that's making all of these crazy noises, they at least have something to distract <laughs> themselves. With. But this machine, it looked beat up. It was so loud. She was she just looked terrified throughout it, which again, I thought was very realistic. I would be peeing my pants if I had to go through yeah. that. Yeah. Now. <laughs> You'd be peeing, peeing the, the carpet floor. Give me a diaper. <laughs> Everyone is going to die. Um, yeah. I I had made a note too because I was just like, that's always a scene that I just like, I hate seeing because I'm just like, I, I can see myself being there and just being I like, would be so nervous. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I'm trying to think what happens, what follows this. They do have the meeting with all of these doctors and these kind of consultants oh. and everything where Chris is talking to them and they're basically telling her they've done all of these tests, all of these scans, and they're telling her that there's no medical explanation for what's happening mm -hmm. to Regan. And um, this is <laughs> this is when they ask her, do you have any religious beliefs? Or <laughs> She's like, no, She's like, no, of course not. What about your daughter? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> but um, so they ask her how basically how she feels about an exorcist. N but or an I exorcism. Do, exorcism. But I do, I appreciate the part where they kind of preface it as saying like, you know, it's really, n there's nothing scientific about it. It's more of a psychological We're thing. treating it like a placebo. Yeah, where it's basically you're trying to give the um, the person a explanation or a way out of this medical. Right. Yeah, because at first we were just like, the fuck doctor <laughs> says the this it's just like it's like their way of being like hey we yeah. give up have you tried have this you tried which crap we tried those guys <laughs> over there um but yeah like you said the the preface of it actually does kind of help it, yeah it, it helps it makes it a little bit more realistic right. which i enjoy um but yeah so then we basically are taken back to regan and this is kind of when um Doctors come to see her too, and she, you know, throws her mother against a wall, and she, you can clearly, her eyes have turned green. Mm -hmm. Her Which skin, is really changing. Yeah, her, I mean, physically, she's completely different. And then she's saying all of this terrible shit. And this is kind of when it hit the, uh, the lake at the cabin, where she's screaming, fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so she's screaming all this stuff. Beating everyone up. She kicks everyone's ass. She kicks everyone's ass. And this is to the point where they have to take out basically everything in the room except for the bed that they have now padded and tied her down to. And at this point, Chris does go to um, Father Damien and she just starts talking to him and asking him what can be done about this. I think my daughter is possessed. Mm -hmm. And he tells her, which again, similar to kind of what the doctor says, like, no, we don't do this anymore he's like this isn't really a thing what you need is some actual psychiatrist we, to we see her know about mental disorders now mm -hmm. so and so he's trying to explain it in um in that kind of grounded scientific route and she basically just cries into his shoulder until he comes back to her house and mm -hmm. sees her daughter and clearly he's shooken up because he now has pea soup in his mouth <laughs> <laughs> Has probably been shot a few moments before. <laughs> Nearly shot. Get out Nearly there. Shot. Get out there, kid. Um, but yeah, so then he ends up talking to Chris and telling her, you know, if this was to happen, we need the church's approval. We need someone who has actually performed exorcisms. Um, he ends up recording Regan trying to talk in like different tongues so that he has proof to bring back to the church. And you find out that she was actually just speaking in English, but it was backwards. backwards. And, and when he uh, plays it, it's basically, it just kind of says, like, help me, get me out. And then you hear, like, the demons talk and it says, like, beware of the priest, beware Marin. of Marin, Marin. Um, that, uh, that voice, too, 
pretty good voice. It's like a really creepy voice. voice. Yeah. It's actually someone's voice as in they didn't change anything with the oh, person's that voice. Poor person. Her name is a uh, Mercedes McCambridge who Orson Jesus, Welles. Jesus, what a fancy name. I know. What a shitty voice. <laughs> right? Orson Welles dubbed the world's greatest living radio actress, um, which is pretty cool. Wow. I'd be like, someone told me that. I'd be like, thanks. Huh. Well, then I feel like she must have done something to her. It's not, that's not her normal yep. voice. If she's a radio actress, that's not her normal There's voice. There's a downside to having a demon voice like this. Um, she she believed that chain smoking and a diet of raw eggs and whiskey were the key to a great vocal performance. I love a raspy voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with her. Let's get back to chain smoking. <laughs> I already eat a lot of, well, I eat a lot of eggs. I don't eat a lot of raw eggs though, so. Egg whites. Switch, I think switch the yolk up. is where the magic is. I know. <laughs> <laughs> whiskey though ah all right yeah i'd be down for that whiskey and cigars Oof. maybe we just need that a cadbury a cadbury <laughs> you know what we didn't have a drink for uh this this episode do you think we should we should have drinks for shitty movies i think so i think it'd right? be more enjoyable the next shitty movie we watch um we're just gonna take five shots of tequila <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll we'll drink a drink here on the podcast Maybe while we'll we're, see how loud it is. Yeah, this could too. <laughs> I might have to get straws. <laughs> because if we're going to watch a shitty movie like that, we're going to need some help. I'd like a, yeah, I'd like a little buzz. A little help. Um, but anyway, so, well, actually, I should say before she's tied down to the bed, um, there is a moment where Chris is out and she's either talking to some more doctors or something. She comes back to the house and she sees, um, she goes to check on Regan. The window is open and it's like either late fall or early winter. So it's very cold in the room. Yep. Um, you can see her breath in the window. Like, you know, the curtains are blowing out. So the window's been open for a while. Okay. What? I was going to say, I don't think it matters the season outside. It's going to be well, it freezing does. It does start room. to get colder later on in the movie, but... I don't think it has to do with the season. It has to do with... No, know. I mean, it does because she. Co- it's not at that point where the room gets freezing. It, like, it gradually right. gets that way. But anyway, <laughs> um, so she closes the window and she goes downstairs. And as she's walking downstairs, the assistant comes walking in the front door and she kind of scolds her for... Saying, yeah. like, what, how could you leave my daughter with the window open? And this is when the assistant says, well, I didn't leave her alone. She was with Burke, who is the director of the, the drunken the director. Drunk director. Um, to which Chris scolds her again and is like, why would you trust him? Because <laughs> he apparently had just kind of walked out. And but then we come to find out that he didn't just walk out. He was found at the bottom of the steps that's right next to the house. There's like it's these cement steps with his head completely turned around. <laughs> he took a tumble. He took a tumble. He just took a um, tumble. But then, kind of actually, where she is talking to the doc or the doctor is with Regan tied down. That's when she kind of realizes that Regan was the one to completely twist his neck around and mm-hmm. push him out the window, and where he lands at the bottom of the stairs. She moited him. He moited. But it's, I I do take issue with that because the shots that we are shown later on in relation from the house to the stairs outside, it's a very long way. And for him to land, because we see someone's body go down those steps mm-hmm. later on in the movie, and it looks like he just jumps out the window directly down to the steps. But then when it's later on, the shot is kind of angled. So it's... I think it was a mistake on their part. Um, it's either a mistake that, because... or if it wasn't clearly laid out well because they built another section onto the house specifically because of that reason mm-hmm. and um because the house that they had specked out was so far away from the stairs mm-hmm. and they knew what they were going to do with the stairs so yeah. they added a whole new section to the house mm-hmm. so when they did have certain shots yeah it was showing that mm-hmm. to make it be like well it's a little That's bit closer right there, than you think yeah. but yeah i think at the end of the movie when they, when they specifically have that shot mm-hmm. where he's like walking to the top of the stairs yeah. from the top of the stairs yeah um, it's way too far away, yeah. and I think it's just like an oversight yeah. on their on their part. But yeah, so um, then we have uh, Father Damien. He's talking to like a church elder or something, mm-hmm. basically pleading with them. We need. Um, I think he called him your master, my master, or something. <laughs> he kisses the toes. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, and this is when Father Marin is reintroduced to the story. Yep. So Father Marin has 
been, you know, away traveling, but he has experience in exorcism. So he comes and this is when we get the very famous shot. Um, basically, the cover of the movie is Father Marin coming up to the house with his like long coat, his little briefcase, his hat, mm-hmm. and he's standing next to the street lamp on a foggy night. It's a classic, beautiful, classic shot. beautiful. So he um, is assisted by Father Damien. And they go up to the room and this is when they start to actually perform the exorcism, Mm -hmm. which I mean, it's, it's intense. It's great. Again, I just, just, I still can't, any shot that Father Marin's in, I can't get over the makeup. It looks so good. I know, it's so good. (laughs) But this is when Regan hocks a loogie (laughs) right on Father Marin's eye. It's so disgusting. I hate it. I mean, it looks, it looks completely fake because it just looks like this yellow goop, but it's just, It's like slime, but more it's, limey or like slime is like very neon vibrant green mm-hmm. and this one is this like, was like a mustard yellow yeah, it was yeah it, it was gross yeah it was really gross um but yeah so there and father Marin kind of preps damien beforehand saying like don't listen to mm-hmm. what this well they find out that it's not just a demon it's the devil himself and they you know kind of say don't listen to what he's saying he will tell lies, but he'll also tell the truth to throw us off, which I like. Yeah. It's like, that's, Because yeah. he's like, no, I should tell you more. There's, I think there's three spirits. And he's like, nope, there's just one. There's just one. I know who it is. Yeah. <laughs> um. So they go up, they start performing. They actually splash her with some holy water, some real holy water. And, uh, you know, start to go through some Bible, ver- I don't know, their Bible verses or just, I, I guess I don't really remember what they're called. Um. But yeah, so they start performing the exorcism and you have Regan screaming and her head spinning yep. and spitting the up. The classic and, stuff. Yeah, all the classic I stuff. I like uh, this, the part where he's splashing the water and then he turns over to Karis and he just gives him a splash. <laughs> he's like, out a demon. And then looks at Karis, you too. <laughs> and just a hint for and you. Just a little for you. <laughs> yeah, that is a good scene. Um, but yeah, so there's, you know, they are trying to expel the demon and they end up needing a break because it's so intense. Mm-hmm. Um, to which they're sitting out and Father Marin like goes into the bathroom by himself. Um, Father Damien goes in to check on Regan. He has his stethoscope and he kind of listens to um, its heart. And at that point, I can't tell what they're inferring. I'm assuming it's just she just has a weak, really weak heartbeat. Yeah. Okay. To where, like, like he said, if they if give I her give, sedative yeah, or anything, she's going to go into a coma. Into a coma. Um, I was going to say before we yeah. get into that much further, mm-hmm. I like um, the um, the coupling between these two, between Karis and um, Regan, um, mm-hmm. just because it felt like a chess match when they would talk to each other. Mm-hmm. Like he's trying to sidestep her at every you know which way Mm -hmm. and then the devil or the the demon is doing the same thing and um like even um there's specific things that the uh the demon can do and then he asks the demon to do it again and the demon's like no no another time he's like no no no, do it right now another time yeah yeah he basically asked the devil to untie himself from his restraints Mm -hmm. and he's like that would just be kind of too blatant display of my power. And he's like, no, do it. Yeah, he's just like very much challenging yeah. it. And then it knows too, because it looks at him like, like fuck you. What? you <laughs> um, so it, like I said, it felt like a chess match. I, I did, really yeah. Enjoyed that. Yeah, no, I'm glad you pointed that out. That was a really cool part. Um, yeah, so getting back into the exorcism, the devil starts to speak to Damien and through the voice, like with the voice of his now deceased mother Mm -hmm. and basically saying like why did you leave me in this place blah 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 and really kind of trying to hit him where it hurts and it does have a very intense effect on him to where to the point where he has to leave the Mm -hmm. room and so father Marin is the only one in the room (laughs) and then damien goes back into the room and we find poor father Marin dead on the bed he's just on the he's just dead and we hear uh regan laughing Mm -hmm. and it's very creepy laugh i really like it's it's like a giggle it's like a raspy (sighs) giggle um which is really creepy so (laughs) he starts to try and punch the demon out (laughs) (laughs) well he he tries to resuscitate he oh yeah he tries to resuscitate father Marin. and i was curious when 
CPR was yeah. invented <laughs> because he listens. And this is a man of science, a man yeah, of exactly. medicine. He listens to the heartbeat. And then he looks like he's like, try, he's, I don't even know. It's, he's just punching the chest. It's like, I get it. Like you, he's, he's just like, no, no, no. Like he's in distress. But even when someone's in distress, you don't just go into pound the shit out of you. Live. I mean, I think what he's trying to do is restart the heart. Yeah. Um, but you do that with CPR. I know. Yeah. Well, Chest compressions. It, yeah. But this one is like, you could crack a rib cage. <laughs> Those are the both punches he's throwing. But, yeah. but I mean, both of them will do that regardless. CPR is going to crack your rib yeah, cage. Yeah, when you do Every chest compressions. Time? Especially with someone that old, it'll, it'll happen. Yeah. Well. That's what you're told. I have not taken CPR in forever. I know. All I know is stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she... She gets the shit beat out of her by Yeah, so at at this point, yeah, Karis grabs Regan and just starts punching her. Literally beat the devil out of Mm -hmm. Regan. And he looks her in the eye and says, you know, take me instead. Leave her alone. Mm -hmm. And I do like this, um, this part where clearly the devil transfers from her body to his. Mm -hmm. And you have this interesting transition of Father Damien just the normal looking one and then the possessed kind of with with the the makeup and the eyes and it kind of flickers back and forth for Mm -hmm. a second. So I I really like that transition. I thought that was really good. Um, And now at this point he is possessed and he just throws himself out of Regan's bedroom window. And he again lands at the bottom of the cement stairs outside, Mm -hmm. which I don't get the trajectory of it. Yeah. I mean, it's best just to not question it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we have, and at that kind of just before that moment, we have our inspector, right. our detective who has been kind of hounding Chris and um, the priest and asking them about what happened to the director Burke and, right. you know, really he was getting closer and closer. He's getting he closer. Was... He knows something's going on, something's fishy. And so he goes back to the house during the exorcism right before um, Damien throws himself out the window. And this is when the detective and Chris come running up to the room and we see Regan crying out for her mother and the window shattered and then the body at yep. like looking out of the window. <laughs> so the biggest scene has now passed. And then, um, you know, people obviously like crowd around the body that's on the ground because they heard the noise, they saw him fall. And um, then we come to kind of the next scene of Chris and Regan are packing up. They're clearly ready to just move out of the house and get out of there as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and she tells, um, or she asks her assistant to come with her, and the assistant's like, "No fucking yeah, way, not gonna happen." No. Um, and she's actually, she, the assistant does give Chris Father Damien's necklace, which the pendant that he had on his necklace that Regan had ripped off during kind of the um, exorcism struggle was the pendant that Rob mentioned, <laughs> the mm-hmm. keychain pendant. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the beginning, that Father Marin found in Iraq which is interesting. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so then um, they kind of just drive away after saying goodbye to another priest that they had met. And there was um, what was always like considered like the scariest movie ever made. Yeah. Uh, especially as a kid. Like that's what it was. I was told, and especially even by my parents are like, this is the scariest movie ever, which Whoa. is always really weird to think like, this is it. Mm-hmm. This is the movie. And you're like, holy shit. Usually because it's, especially when it comes to scary things or, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's the same to me. It's like very similar to comedy. And, you know, mm-hmm. some things are funny. Some things aren't. Some things are scary. Some things aren't. Um, depends on the person. But mm-hmm. um, it's so that's why I always felt really weird that this was the movie that was supposed to be the scariest. Mm-hmm. And I will say after, um, you know, however many years and however many times I've seen it, it definitely doesn't get scary anymore like mm-hmm. it used to like i remember specifically when they were ready to go see her both of the fathers like i remember them walking and stuff i was like oh, no i don't want to watch anymore <laughs> like i was t- i was done they were yeah. so tense for me mm-hmm. anytime they were going up to that room mm-hmm. i don't want to go in that room yeah but now i'm like yeah i want to see what i want to like. see what she looks like yeah. <laughs> yeah um i think too probably one of the things is just the way that regan talked mm-hmm. as the possessed child Probably, I'm sure it took so many people off guard because when have you ever seen a child 
talk like that and swear like that in a mm-hmm. movie. <laughs> That would be yeah, that would be really unnerving. Um apparently the um the director said the um no, it was Linda Blair's delivery of um her like dialogue, the foul mouth dialogue mm-hmm. disturbed um Max von Sindau, the uh, father Marin, mm. that he actually forgot his lines. Oh. <laughs> like during those Yeah, those scenes. I'm sure. It would really kind of stop you in your tracks if you'd like especially seen her before all oh, of yeah. the makeup and just this very like sweet cute little yeah um because i'm sure she still had to say her lines mm-hmm. and then they had to double so that, it over yep. with yeah um but yes that i mean i like you said i don't think it's a scary movie anymore but it's still a i it's a entertaining movie. yeah I, and at the time uh reportedly there were like at the initial release audience members you know, reported feeling faint, n- nauseous, um, and vomiting, actually vomiting. Um, some theaters even gave out barf bags <laughs> to keep their place clean. Um, and then the director suggested that the needle scene in the hospital was um, the scene that actually made people sick, not the supernatural. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. A lot um, of people don't like needles. N- no. I know it's weird, but it's, yeah. no. Um so uh, yeah, so I mean, it was uh, it was really nice to kind of rewatch this and mm-hmm. and see all those all those scenes. Too. Did you read anything? Because I heard this as kind of interesting trivia too. Um, the premiere in Rome. Did you read anything about that? No, I heard that when it premiered in Rome, the theater was across from a church, and the church got struck by lightning <laughs> during the premiere. Oh my god! <laughs> so it's just it's all these weird things and weren't there like a couple fires on set yeah so um and i was trying to look at that too so the it was the set was in new york Mm -hmm. um and then yeah there was a studio fire that forced the team to rebuild Mm -hmm. the set um um including the house interiors including including wasn't her room spared basically yes it was like everything but But her room (laughs) yeah um and then i guess a toddler was injured by a motorbike um and the director brought a priest to bless the cast and crew um and the set production then moved to dc so by the end of production nine people associated with this movie had passed away oh my god so like i said including um uh the mother. director um or yeah the mother and then the director in the movie um who had actually were in the movie but also passed away mm. um i think it was either i think it was it was either um, during production mm-hmm. or post. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, it would have to be the, those two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't be pretty. Um, so, uh, the deaths occurred um, during the filming of Exorcist, including um, Linda Blair's grandfather oh. and um, Max von Sydow's uh, brother, who died on Max's first day of shooting. So much associated Ooh, with God. this. I mean, that, that has to help with the whole spookiness of it. Absolutely. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that, do you want to jump into the IMDb reviews? It's time. Okay. So, um, the overall reviews that we see, um, for people of our age group, 19 to 29, um, males gave it an eight solid eight and then female gave 7.6. Okay. Okay. So the first review is the exorcist, a perfect film, (laughs) 10 out of 10. Many people complain that this movie's too slow, but those are kind of folks who only like 80 minute splatter films with characters so dumb and one sided, you pray for the bad, the bad guy to kill them. <laughs> this monster of a drama is both beautiful and bold. It has characters and not simply lame brains lined up for slaughter. Yeah. It has class and purpose. It takes the audience into the darkest recesses of uh, the human mind and then brings them back through a, a message of hope and self sacrifice. It's a little preachy. But yeah. Okay. The movie is not anti-religion. It's anti-evil. <laughs> Anyone who likes smart, clever, meaningful horror drama should see this film at least twice. Okay. At least twice. <laughs> it's surprisingly touching. I was going to say touchy. Touching and amazingly powerful. Hmm. That said, the cast deserves a, a hand um, a hand for their wonderful performance. performances. Ellen Burstyn uh, perfectly conveys the tension of a mother. Uh, of the cusp of the tra- tragedy, Max von Sydow is hauntingly perfect as the story's ray of, su- of light. Mm-hmm. Jason Miller embodies the sadness of a, of, of a defeated man and Linda Blair is far above average, even at her young age. Far above average. 
I feel like she was, she was one way, of the best. Yeah, she's more than just... <laughs> That's kind of a mediocre review. Yeah. You're far above average. Once again, see this movie. You won't forget it. <laughs> review number two. Okay. Pretty good, but pretty flawed. Seven out of ten. Well, after all these years, I finally got around <laughs> to seeing this picture. I will not I will not change the way that they No, absolutely. They you read it word for word. Um what I found was it was a pretty good horror movie, but nothing at all outstanding. There was a there was a lot of good stuff, but some pretty bad flaws too. There seemed to be an awful lot of extraneous stuff in the movie that should have just been left out to make a tighter story. For instance, what was up with the whole opening scene in Iraq? <laughs> what did it have to do with anything? Oh, you. Yeah, it proved a little exposition on the exorcist character, but not really that much. And by the time the dogs are barking and the weird guy is staring at him, the whole thing starts to make no sense and then ask more questions than it answers. How do you feel? I I can see how someone would be confused by that, but they do, I mean, they do bring it back, mm-hmm. especially when she, during the actual exorcism, they show the statue that he faces right. in Iraq. Or the prolonged story about the shrinks shrink priest's mother that seemed to be done in vastly more detail than was warranted for the importance of the story. They spent like no time on that. I know. There were like two scenes with her. <laughs> or really the entire character of the cop, which ends up going nowhere. And I'm still scratching my head to figure out the relevance of the drunk guy making Nazi acquisitions. I agree with <laughs> yes, that I do too. <laughs> There's also a fundamental problem of motive. What on earth was the demon trying to accomplish by possessing the girl? What? Well, But I feel like you could say that about like any, any possession. Yeah, yeah. They're not like trying to possess the president or right. the queen of England. It's just a random girl. What are you going to do with a random girl? <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. With the power of that, with the, with the power that the demon clearly possessed, do you think it could have found better ways to cause havoc or do evil for whatever the heck its goal was? Whatever the heck its goal was. <laughs> <laughs> than just by tormenting a little girl and her family. That thing could have caused trouble on a vastly larger scale than that. And I still can't really think of any method into its madness. First, clanking around in the attic. Why is he trying to rationalize the, the demon, the devil's motive? Right. He's, he's just like, it's not like, okay, so here's our quarterly goal. Yeah. We need to possess 10 to 15 high paid. Roughly. Yeah. Yep. Very influential people. And then we'll go from there. What are, two, we accompli- we don't know. what are we accomplishing? Mm. You're fired. <laughs> You're fired. Get him out of here. <laughs> First clanking around in the attic. What did that accomplish? Then taking a long time to possess the little girl. Why the painfully... A long time. I feel like that happened super, super fast. Yeah, that was really quick. Why the painfully slow approach when he was able to take over the priest instantaneously? And yeah. You the- could argue the priest was accepting of it. He just, yep. Ah! He said, yeah, the priest invited him in, but still, the girl was pretty much helpless to resist. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> in short, the demon's character is very badly contrived. It conveniently <laughs> does whatever will lead to a gradual buildup of suspense and shock in the film for the convenience of the director rather than having any logical, consistent motive. Why are you trying to say the demon is logical? When has that ever been? A- <laughs> he just wants to shake the demon. What do you want? <laughs> Be more reasonable. Be more reason- Come on, be reasonable here. <laughs> Still, while rather slow uh, in developing, it did hold my interest. And I did care about the outcome and it was pretty creepy. If not exactly terrifying. That's such a weird... I hate this person. It's such a weird way of saying it. If not exactly, it's, it's exactly terrifying. It's not more, it's not less, but it's pretty much exactly terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> like he's just like, it was a pretty good film. They were able to get this one part exactly. I just, I think this is so weird. The fact that they're trying to like rationalize the devil yeah. and be like, but besides that big flaw, I liked it. <laughs> pretty good movie. Again, a pretty good horror flick, but no great masterpiece. Okay. All right. Review number three. <laughs> I almost feel ashamed for not liking this movie. Six out of ten. This is a very frustrating scene. Oh, there is a very frustrating scene from Jaws 2 where Brody walks into the Selectsman's Selectsman's meeting carrying the photograph that two divers took as they were being eaten. Brody sees the outline of the mouth and the eye. 
and we should know what a shark looks like. But when he passes it around, Harry says, are they, seaweed? Are they doing the... Do, they, I th- I do think we have still, the right review? <laughs> yeah, I think we're still on Exorcist, but we'll see. Verna Field says, it's underwater, isn't it? Why is it so dark? They can't see something that is so obvious, that is so obviously and that is bothering, bothersome. This is how I feel about my reaction to The Exorcist. Every, everybody has told me how frightening it is and how it's, it is a psychological trip. I don't know if it's a psychological trip. I don't feel like people have told me that it's, it's terrifying. A, yeah. yeah. I don't like people are, say it's a classic. Yeah. But I don't think I've ever heard anyone describe it as terrifying anymore. And I know the reaction that audience had towards in the 70s. But as much as I try, I can't see it. And I'm, it's not a scary movie. It's not even an enjoyable one. And I would even go as far to say it's not even a good movie. Ah. So, compared to, let's just stop there. Compared to our parameters where we say a 5 out of 10, it's a good movie. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's just a, it's a, it's, it's like a, fair a movie. it's a fair movie. Mm-hmm. So, a 6 would be higher and be like, okay, there's more to it. There's mm-hmm. more to it than just being fair. There's, mm-hmm. there's something to this. Mm-hmm. But to them saying 6 it's is like not a good movie. a 3. Yeah. For us. So, it makes me wonder what their scale is. I don't know. <laughs> and I get you're working with the parameters of IMDb. So, they you have to do the 1 through 10. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, 1 through 10. Because you can't get zero, I'm pretty sure. First off, there are so many parts of this film that I have, that have nothing to do with what the film is about. The first hour is nothing. But- it really has no relevance to the rest of the film. And for the life of me, I, I really can't understand what the beginning of it's about. For the life of you? Why do we need the background of The Exorcist in Iraq? Well, what does this have to do with the film and how does it further the plot? I don't get it. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Secondly, mm-hmm. this is a very poorly edited film. Mm-hmm. There were times I cringed at some of the editing. It was, it was such a blatant cut that you felt like you could see the editors crazy gluing the film together. And I'm not saying that's what? cruel. I really mean that. That's it. That's all they say. They don't say like, what, where, where are they talking? Ex- yeah. yeah. There's no examples. They just say that it's poorly edited. Oh, you know what? I wonder if it's the scenes where they flash the devil's face. Probably. By the way, that's, um, that, that subliminal devil face yeah. was actually like, uh, a mask that they were going to use for like mm-hmm. her to use and they decided to scrap it. But then they're like, well, let's use it for the subliminal, yeah. like. Uh, demon because that's supposed like, to be what the demon looks like i feel like that's maybe what they're referring to and then uh, uh, Could uh, be. another part of me feels that this person's a big fat idiot yep i'm gonna go with the latter <laughs> thirdly this is a big one what is so scary about this film really all regan did was get her face scarred a bit vomit a lot yell obscenities and bludgeon herself with a cross now she Okay, keep going. That is interesting in the fact that it must have sent a shockwave through the religious community because it's not supposed to say anything. Because you are not supposed to say or do anything bad towards the church. And they're talking about like taking God's name in vain? Yeah. I'm pretty sure you can't. It's like a faux pas to damn someone. So saying like, oh, God damn you. Mm-hmm. Instead of being like, God damn it, I stubbed my toe. <laughs> so is that worse or better? than masturbating with a cross well um masturbation is bad a sin and if you do it with jesus on the cross <laughs> no 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 <laughs> you're uh competing with the devil there buddy. <laughs> eat some cornflakes and shut up <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of scares or chills no way they just weren't there i can in- i can admire a film like halloween and Blair Witch for being innovative enough to scare us. But no, this film, frankly. Innovative? This movie? Okay. I was bored. I really was. There were times I wanted to turn this off and watch a, ba- a baseball game. And we all oh, know how boring, so boring baseball. <laughs> we all know how boring baseball is on the tube. On the tube. On the tube. But this film moved at a snail's pace. And if they would have cut it down by 30 minutes, I m- it may have been better. It may have been better. <laughs> Explain. Like, give us more. Don't just be like, these are all surface level yeah, like, complaints they don't really get that this it, person. Yeah. yeah, they're just like, no, it just is. It just sucks. Just... Explain. Nah. 
The other element I can't get past is the fact that this was the devil himself. Okay, let's just say it was. Why does it allow itself to be tied down? Why does it jump at water that isn't holy? Why does it possess a girl when it can come into the earth in human form if it wanted to? I do think there's somewhere in the um, the reaction to the non-holy water. Because I thought that was an interesting part. So there's a part where Father Damien comes in to, this is where he's trying to basically collect um, kind of evidence for the church to perform the exorcism. And he holds up this little vial of water and mm-hmm. tells Regan, well, this is holy water. And he splashes some on her and she reacts pretty violently towards it. And then later on, when he's talking to Chris, he explains, this is just tap water. So I am, I was curious about that. I think, um, and I'm not sure if I have anything to base it off of technically. Well, probably not. So what I, my impression from it <laughs> was that... Um, it knew that it wasn't holy water. So it knew that he was trying to find something about her that wasn't. So then like he would leave essentially. Like he's not needed like anymore. Reading really, and then, yeah. But the, the way that I don't know if I'm reading too far is mm-hmm. because of the fact that he says that and he's like, yeah, what this wouldn't typically case, happen. Yeah. We didn't have a strong case. And then when he's like, by the way, did you tell her about this one thing mm-hmm. that only you and I would know about? And she says, no. She, there's no way she would have known that you... Yeah, that your mother passed away. Right. And I think that was the part where he's like, okay, there's... There's clearly something th- That passed my mm-hmm. other test kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it knowing things that it shouldn't know. But then that's the thing too. He didn't bring anything like that up. So that was the devil bringing it up. And if the devil's trying to... By the way, I don't think it's a devil. It's a demon. They it's, say it's the devil. It's Pazuzu. So it's a, they then they cut it out of the movie too, specifically saying that Pazuzu... Because it's supposed to be a demon and its specific name is Pazuzu, but they took it out of the film because they felt like saying the word Pazuzu like took away from the gravity of this, you know, the scariness of the... the... Then don't even bring up Pazuzu. It said the devil, but I don't think... Like, there's a lot of cases in possessions and stuff where they... I'm basing this off what they said in the I movie. know, <laughs> I know, but I, I think we're taking that surface level. They in, say like, it's the devil. <laughs> it says it's the devil, but like... No, and then the fathers, they are like either Marin or um, Damien, they say, okay, he says it's the devil. I don't think he says it like it's actually yes, the does. devil, like it's actually what it is. Well, it doesn't turn out to be the devil because the second movie is about Pazuzu, yeah, what but it the, is. This movie is about that. But they were intending it to be Pazuzu to begin with anyways. I don't care about intent. It's what you, the product you put out. So Pazuzu. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, okay. Why does it possess a girl when it could come into the earth uh, in human form if it wanted to? When Lucifer was kicked out of heaven, he was abolished because of greed and lust for power. So for (laughs) for an angel to be that despised must have been considered dangerous and powerful. If that is so, then why all the scenes of Satan being dominated by humans? Are you saying that the best he could do is come up with, the best he could come up with is making a girl puke, levitate and throw a few things around in the room? That sounds more like he was just having a bad day because he couldn't get his own way. That doesn't sound like the personification of evil. You want to see real evil? Watch De Niro in Angel Heart. Anything? I don't like this person. (laughs) (laughs) One more. The paragraph, I should say. Uh, The Exorcist is a film that has its place in history and I can admire it for that. No, you can't. You clearly don't. And... To be honest, I almost felt like someone that doesn't like the Blair Witch Project. I can't understand why people can't like that film. What? That is a true fear for me. So when I say that this film is really not that good, I can understand why people may think I'm ignorant. But when you compared this to A Nightmare on Elm Street or Halloween, can you honestly say that this has more to offer? Right, but this is not the argument. This is not an argument. This is their own argument that they're bringing up. No one's saying like, you know... Headlines for the exorcism better than Halloween. Yeah, this is he's like straw manning, he's just putting up this whole thing and battling himself. Yeah, and if you can say that, well, I just don't see it, and that is it. I don't like him. <laughs> what a nerd. so, I mean, if if you don't like the way that he rated this movie, how would you rate this movie? We as have a different the final, we rating? Have a, I feel like we have a different scale than this crazy psychopath. I know. I know. 
Because for me, again, it's rewatchability, recommendations. Yep. And, you know, consistent interest throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't say that this movie is scary for us. I do think that there are some moments that have a slow pace to them. Mm -hmm. But I like rewatching this movie. I would recommend it to people. Again, not as like a scary movie, but it's a classic. It's a classic for a reason. Yep. And... I think, oddly, the things that I really enjoyed, too, is the trivia behind oh, the movie, um, which I don't know if that's fair to take into consideration, yeah. but I still, I, but I think the performances are pretty solid, especially with Regan and um, Father Marin. So I would probably, I would rate this like 7.1, 7.2. Okay. I'm going to put that down on our list. Um, and my, oops. So what is it? 7.1 or 7.2? Uh, I'll say 7.2. 7.2? Yeah. Okay. Um, so my rating, my final rating, um, and I'm thinking about very similar things too. I really like um, the pacing of this movie. I, I really enjoy the acting. I think everyone was pretty solid um, with their performances. And it was it was nice to see. And I really like the prolonged shots. I know I say this for a lot of movies, mm -hmm. but it's something that I think is going away. You see so many cuts um, between performances and really all you're seeing is just splices of different perform or like different times for each, um, actor. And it's, it's really nice just to see two together in the moment. Um, I think the effects are really cool. Mm -hmm. And I know we didn't really talk about the spider crawling down the, Oh yeah. That's um, creepy. but seeing that, and that wasn't in the version that we saw, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but, um, I I also still consider this a classic too, and I think um, I don't think it's scary either. <laughs> um, it might be a little spooky with certain things, but it's not like I'm not I'm going to sleep pretty easily tonight. Let's just say, oh, God, yeah. um, unless I think about that blood, that's then that's a different story. But I'm going to give it a seven point three. Okay, so we're uh, spot on again. We're spot on again. There's going to be a movie where we're both just going to be I two hope different wavelengths. We break up because of this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I give it, I give it like a, we're going to watch like Nacho Libre. I'm going to give it like a 10. I'll give it like a two. Yeah. That'll be the breaking point. <laughs> That's the spooky movie that tears us apart. Well, let's end it on a good note then. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for, for listening on another episode. Um, we really enjoyed this one as well so uh please follow the social channels um give us suggestions on movies to add to our our spooky spinner and uh sign us off jessica goodbye Give me some time to blow the land down. I'm a deep water sailor just in from Hong Kong. Give me way, blow the land down. Give me some.